Welcome, I'm Rabbi Phil Bressler of Beit Am in Corvallis, Oregon, and this is the daily summary video for the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch Yomi Daily Halakha Learning Project, covering the passage from Siman 151 Se'if 6 to Siman 152 Se'if 7. You can find links to the Hebrew and English text of this passage and to the calendar of upcoming passages in this video's description. So as we said yesterday, nocturnal emissions are a thing, and the reality is they're, they are a thing that happens no matter what you do, because sexual thoughts are normal and healthy. But of course, that doesn't stop the Kitsur from detailing some of the ways it thinks you can keep this from happening to you. Uh, generally, avoiding any kind of unseemly talk, keeping your promises, not worrying too much about things that can all help, study Torah before bed or recite some psalms, and don't sleep in a room alone. Rabbi Gansfried uh, cites at length from a book called Yesod Yosef, uh, about how to make amends if a nocturnal emission should happen to you. Uh, Yesod Yosef is a, a, an 1803 Musar text by Rabbi Yosef of Dovna. Okay, all this about marriage and sexual relations within marriage and the seriousness with which halakha takes modesty and overcoming one's base instinct uh, is, always, is just all building towards this section, I think. Um, as we read a couple of days ago, it's not correct to be overly strict about supervising members of your house of your family, but rules are put in place to keep people uh, in what the Kitsur understands to be healthy and appropriate places and situations, um, not secluded with anyone they shouldn't be secluded with. Basically, no one can be fully trusted about this stuff, and especially not non-Jews and especially not women. Gross, I know. Men can't be alone with any woman except their mother, their daughter, or their wife. Note, sister is not on this list. Some authorities apparently permit that and others don't. But you get the sense for how sweeping the assumptions are here about what people, especially young people, will do if left alone. Being around any other woman is only permitted if you have a chaperone, your own wife, for example. The assumptions uh, about non-Jews are even worse here, really pretty grotesque. A Jewish woman can't be alone with a non-Jewish man even if that non-Jew's wife is also present. Think about those implications. Even many non-Jews and even many, many non-Jews and their many wives can't be alone with a, non -Jew, with a Jewish woman. Think about the implications there too. But when it comes to Jews, one woman can be with two virtuous men alone. There's some degree of trust there. The assumption is that the men will restrain one another. But that trust only goes so far. If it's nighttime or they're out in the field, then a third man is required. One man can't be alone with two women. Again, more bad assumptions about women's inclinations, that they won't restrain one another. Married women are presumed to be chaste. They are in fear of, her, of their husbands. Uh, an open door to a room is usually enough uh, exposure during the daytime to, uh, not, to make you know, two people alone in there not considered secluded. Kids are also excluded from this. Uh, these rules. Girls under the age of three and boys under the age of nine. An unmarried man shouldn't be a school teacher. Uh, apparently the word here is not about the children, but really it's their mothers who bring them to school that he might be alone with. Married men, though, can be teachers, though, if their wife is in town. A woman, however, shouldn't teach children, though, unless her husband is close by, because sometimes dads also bring their kids to school. I as you can see, it's hard to contain my disdain for some of this stuff as well. Again, lots of really terrible assumptions about behavior and gender roles and uh, yeah, lots of, lots of stuff that is, really doesn't match uh, up well with our contemporary sensibilities. In any case, that's all for today. As always, our learning is dedicated to Rabbi Shlomo Gansfried, the author of the Kitsur, and the historic Jewish community of Ushurad, Ukraine. We'll see you tomorrow.